Hey everyone, um, before we get started in this video, we're going to look at verifying some trig identities. Be sure to have your identities handy from your Google Drive folder for your class. Uh, if you need to pause the video to access that so it's handy, feel free to do so. If you have a lot of them memorized, fantastic. That's going to help a lot when you get into your calculus sequence. Uh, so let's just dive in, get started. Uh, we're going to refer to the identities again that are in your Google Drive folder. And we're just going to do several examples for this type of problem. Just being exposed to several examples really helps. So we're going to simplify sine x times cosine squared x minus sine x. Now there's no equation to this. There's no equals 5 or equals something else. It's just how simple can we make this statement. First thing I notice is the first and second terms both have a sine x involved. So let's factor out sine x. That will leave cosine squared x sine divided by sine is 1. Or another way to look at it is if you were to redistribute you get the problem above. Cosine squared x minus 1 when you look at your Pythagorean identities on your identities sheet you will see one that sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. If you subtract a cosine squared theta on both sides you can actually replace this. Oh, I did it the wrong way. Subtract a sine squared theta, then subtract 1. Cosine squared x minus 1 can be replaced with negative sine squared x. Multiplying, we have a negative sine cubed x. And so that's one way to simplify that expression in the original problem. Don't forget factoring. One of the types of factoring is a difference of two squares. If you have two terms separated by a minus sign and they're both perfect squares, then you can factor using a difference of two squares. Secant squared theta can be broken down into secant theta times another secant theta. The square root of 1 is 1. And then to factor a difference of two squares, plus, minus. If you have a trinomial, you want to make sure that your trig function is uniform throughout. In other words, tangent, tangent, it's the same trig function. Now with these, if you wanted to compare with college algebra, because that's where you started learning to factor, you can think of your trig functions as a variable x. This is very similar to 4x squared plus x minus 3. This makes it look more familiar. 4x squared you can write as 4x times x. 3 is 3 times 1. Now where you have to really be careful is this middle term is positive 1x. Outer and inner if you were to think of it in terms of FOIL, the outside and the inside terms must add up to the middle term. 4x minus 3x does give you 1x. Change your x's back into tangents, so the initial trinomial or expression can be factored as 4 tangent theta minus 3. Just swap them back and tangent theta plus 1. If you don't have a uniform set of trig functions, like we have cosecant squared, but then this one's just cotangent. They're not the same like tangent was in the third example. That's okay. Try to find an identity that will let you rewrite one of them, one of the terms, in terms of the other. For example, look in the Pythagorean identity section and you'll be able to find one where cosecant squared x can be replaced with 1 plus cotangent squared x. 
the second and third terms don't have to change. Rearranging from highest power to lowest and combining like terms, you have cotangent squared x minus cotangent x. This positive 1 minus 3 gives you negative 2. Cotangent squared x, you can write as cotangent x times another cotangent x. 2 has factors of 2 and 1, but be very careful. Our middle term is negative 1 cotangent x. So we're going to need to look at the outside, which is positive cotangent x, and the inside, negative 2 cotangent x. Positive 1 minus 2 does give us negative 1 in the middle. Let's simplify sine theta plus cotangent theta times cosine theta. There are no common terms or trig functions to factor out. So we have to look for an alternative route. Some of these get pretty muddy, and that's why I'm doing a lot of examples, just to expose you to different types. In the quotient identity section of your identity sheet from Google Drive, you can rewrite cotangent theta as cosine over sine. Multiplying, that's cosine squared over sine. Sine theta, in order to be added to this group, must have a denominator of sine. It does not. It only has a denominator of an unwritten 1. If you multiply top and bottom by sine, then that makes sine squared over sine, creating a common denominator. Now we can add sine squared plus cosine squared over the common denominator of sine theta. From Pythagorean identities, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. 1 over sine theta from the reciprocal identity is cosecant theta. Your online assessments, homework, tests, those will kind of guide you through some steps, like they'll be partially filled out and you'll have to come up with some of it. Um, just be patient because it these, it's hard. You cannot learn these overnight. You have to do a little bit each day for a while and be exposed to several of them. The second example, we're asked to add sine theta over 1 plus cosine theta, and we're going to add that to cosine theta over sine theta. These two denominators are completely different. They have nothing in common. So I'm going to use both denominators as the common denominator. This first fraction is missing a sine theta on bottom. If you're missing a term, you can multiply it in. Just be sure to do the top as well to keep it balanced out. So this first fraction, if you multiply in a sine theta right here, that will give you sine squared theta over these two uncommon factors. In the second fraction, you'll need to multiply in a 1 plus cosine theta to force a common denominator. Multiply top and bottom by 1 plus cosine theta. That will give you cosine plus cosine squared. Keep the denominator the same as the first fraction, and now you've got a common denominator sine squared theta from this first fraction, cosine theta plus cosine squared theta from the second fraction. From Pythagorean identities, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is 1 plus cosine theta. And now we can cancel 1 plus cosine thetas from top and bottom. That leaves an unwritten 1 over sine theta which is the reciprocal of cosecant theta. Another type of problem that you'll run into again in Calculus 2 is trig substitution. And this one's just to go through the mechanics of how to do one. Use the substitution x equals 2 tangent theta 
where theta is some angle between 0 and pi over 2 radians, we're going to write square root of 4 plus x squared as a trig function of theta. Well, we were told to let x be 2 tangent theta, so really it's just a direct substitution in. Replace x with 2 tan theta. When you square it, you get 4, because 2 squared is 4, tan squared. 4 plus 4 tan squared has what in common? That's right, a 4. If you factor out a 4, that leaves you 1 plus tan squared theta. If you were to redistribute, you get those two terms back. From your Pythagorean identities, which one can we use to rewrite 1 plus tangent squared theta? Correct. 1 plus tan squared theta is equal to secant squared theta. Don't forget your 4. And now when you take the square root, square root of 4 is 2. Square root of secant squared theta is secant theta. I hope this helps. Um, please reach out by email, phone, or office hours for any help that you may need, and I'll do my best to help.